Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and with warm summer days approaching, let's talk about five great yet underrated white grape varieties worth exploring this season. There are wine grapes like Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc that are familiar names even to those who don't drink wine on a daily basis. These grapes are widely planted and widely available, offering variability in quality. But the wine world is much bigger than that. And even I am embarrassed to admit that I don't diversify my wine fridge as much as I would like to. So today let's look beyond the classics and discover what else this beautiful wine world has to offer. You might be more familiar with some of the names, but at some point they may have had a bad rep or surprisingly have never reached the heights of previously mentioned Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc grapes. While others are closely linked with specific winemaking country or region and therefore are rarely found found outside their borders. In my opinion, one of the most underrated and misunderstood white grape varieties is Riesling, which has earned its own video up here and therefore will not be included in this list. Yes. <laughs> Comment if you agree or disagree, and maybe there are other grapes you consider should be added to this list. So let's go! Chenin Blanc is in fact an epic white grape. Yes, it can make crisp and fresh white wines with the relatively neutral nose of green apples, but boy oh boy what a potential it actually holds. First of all, Chenin Blanc can be very versatile. It can make fresh and crisp white wines, but it can also produce wines of great structure, intensity, flavor depth, and full body. It is no stranger to oak and there are some great wines aged in barrels that masterfully add another layer to these wines. Furthermore, Chenin Blanc is susceptible to botrytis, which is why it can be made into outstanding sweet wines with aromas of beeswax, orange marmalade and saffron. Like Riesling, it has very high acidity level which allows Chenin Blanc to age gracefully. I have heard people describing Chenin Blanc's acidity as crescendo, meaning when you taste it, it sticks to your palate and becomes louder, louder and louder. Possibly due to its acidity, it used to be made into off-dry and semi-sweet wines, however, increasingly more dry options are now available. The two main areas to look for Chenin Blanc are the Loire Wally in France, and South Africa, where it can also be labeled as Steen. In Loire, I am in love with producers such as Wet and Francois Chiden. In South Africa, many wines tend to be more neutral in style due to higher yields, causing them to lose some of Chenin Blanc's distinctive characteristics. But producers such as Seti Family and Ken Forrester are worth seeking out. Garganaga is the grape behind famous Suave wines and for most of us Suave needs no introduction. Some might associate it with the light and easy drinking white wine, oftentimes unmemorable. But just like with other grapes, yields have great impact on Garganaga wines. And it is a highly productive grape and if large yields are encouraged, the wine's quality will suffer. However, in the right hands, Garganaga can produce miraculously beautiful wines. These wines offer a great concentration of ripe yellow fruit flavors mixed with hints of cherry blossom and delicate almond characters. What's even more important, the best Garganega wines can truly age and they will not break your wallet. Suave is naturally the best known appellation to look for Garganega wines and Suave Classico is definitely a more reliable source for premium examples. Gambellara in Veneto, Italy is another appellation worth mentioning, though it might be harder to find it in export markets. There are even some Garganega vineyards planted in Sicily. Among my favorite producers are Piero Pan, Pra and Suavia. Assyrtiko is just one of many Greek grape varieties worth mentioning, but I had to start somewhere. It is probably one of the best known white grape varieties of Greece, and rightfully so. Like most grapes on this list, I must praise its ability to retain acidity in relatively dry and hot environments, which could also be reason why it should be explored by winemakers outside of Greece and its islands. In Greece, Assyrtiko can produce light, crisp, and white orchard fruit driven wines. Yet more exciting are those wines showing extraordinary intense saline grip, 
mouth-watering acidity that lifts its body and combines fruit flavors with chalky minerality that these wines so often offer. The best known and perhaps most represented examples in export markets come from Santorini Island, where this grape represents around 70% of all vineyard plantings. Among many producers worth exploring, I want to mention Gaia and Alpha Estate. Given the fact that Sauvignon is the mother of several famous grape varieties, we really should talk about it much more. It is indeed an old grape variety, and as usually observed with ancient grapes, they tend to show a variety of mutations and clonal diversity. Same here, it is genetically identical to grape Traminer, and one of its most famous aromatic mutations is in fact Gewurztraminer. However, I want to focus solely on Sauvignon Blanc this time. It is capable of producing very high quality wines with great structure and lively acidity. What is very important for our ever-changing climate, it has good resistance to fungal diseases. Moreover, it is responsible for amazingly unique wines produced in Jura region, France, Vin Jean. I understand that their unique wine style, as these wines are aged under the yeasty film, might not be to everyone's liking, but they are definitely worth exploring. Full-bodied, with dense flavors of fresh nuts, white mushrooms and great depth of earthiness. However, Sauvignon Blanc actually goes beyond Vin Jean and it doesn't have to be aged under the voile to catch our attention. It can produce zesty white wines with an impressive fragrance of preserved lemons, white blossom and hints of spiciness. In terms of producers, it is worth exploring Jean Bourdi and Tissot from Jura, as well as dear to me Austrian producer Weingut Noll with his Traminer wine. Palomino Fino is another grape that is more recognized by the wine it produces rather than its own name. And yes, nowadays the majority of fortified wines from Harris are made from this grape variety. The famous Jancis Robinson book on grapes says exactly that, the sherry grape. And while I absolutely love its expression in dry Harris wines, I believe that it can offer more than that. And why shouldn't we explore grapes that have shown such a good suitability to hot and dry environments? In my humble opinion, Palomino Fino can also offer great still wines. Many consider this grape to be neutral and low in acidity. But as one winemaker noted at large yields, which is usually the case with Palomino Fino, any grape would be relatively neutral. In fact, it can produce quite elegant wines with enough freshness, salty minerality and lively body. I would urge you to give this grape a chance and try some of the increasingly popular still wines of Palomino Fino. Two of the producers worth seeking out are definitely Muchada Le Clapart and Bodegas Luis Perez. So this is the list of only few white grape varieties that I consider underrated, but I also made a video about five underrated red grape varieties. You might want to check it out.